Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk. Each week, one of our hosts introduces an original story, which we then use as a springboard for spirited and lighthearted discussion on whatever the moral or theme of that story is or was. This week, we have a listener story. Woot! Who's it from? It's from AJ or Alicia. Or? Well, it goes, so you can call me oh, either gotcha. one. gotcha. So okay. I'm going with both. I was going to say, did two people write this? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Could be. Split yeah, joint effort. Could be. Ghost I, author. <laughs> I do want to say it's it's a heavier story. There's a lot of words involved. Okay. But it's it's a good story. It's actually really solid. How many words in comparison to listener story Tomas is? This one has 1,300 words. That's, 1,300 plus. That feels like a lot of words. That is a lot of words. I mean, 1,400 of them are the. That's a lot. It's more. It's than, more words <laughs> he than there are in the story. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is the. It's the, it's like, well, you're going to have a really fun time reading that. I am. But no, it's really good. I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to go with AJ because I think AJ sounds cool. It does sound cool. You know what? They both sound cool. Well, which one do you prefer, Zach? Eh, Alicia. I'm not a big acronym guy calling the guys DJ and TJ and CJ and RJ, RJ, RDJ. All right. Well, you ready for AJ's story or Alicia's story? Somebody's story. I'm ready for the story. All right, here we go. Here's the story. Strange. I never thought I'd see myself on other planets before. I've been an explorer for years now, witnessing amazing phenomenons and traveling in a humble-sized rocket ship that is nowhere near as great as others. I don't remember how long ago it happened, Time tends to get distorted when traveling through space. But long ago, my world began to wither and everyone took whatever they could grab before it ran out. The more fortunate people found metals and exchanged them for money. I guess the phrase, money can't buy happiness, fit in the scenario because it was what they did to keep them happy during the final years of our world. Some of us took the metal and whatever fix-ins we could find and decided to build ships, rocket ships that could sail the stars. Many people bought them so they could escape. But because they were worth so much, it was mainly people who had money and those who built them who left. The leaders of our country assured us that it helped with overpopulation, leaving more room for anyone who was left on Earth, and we may have a few more years to live. But of course, none of that made sense to a child. I was one of those kids who had some sort of natural luck. I was a child of an inventor, a genius exquisite with his work. Watching my father, I knew immediately that I wanted to be like him when I grew up building things like clocks and little robots. I found it mesmerizing when I heard every tick, the color of brass, gold and tin, the flicker of fire as it bent the metal. When I was five, I remember begging my father to teach me over and over again. Of course, he told me he'd show me when I was older. So I started at nine. He taught me everything I needed to know, gears, metals, wires, how currents worked. He'd map out the objects so I'd know where everything was placed, and it seemed simple and easy. Then again, while he explained, his hands worked magically as if it was second nature. After a surprising couple months of experimenting, I built my first pocket watch. It didn't work as it should have. It stopped every five minutes, but it was the greatest thing I had ever built at that time, and I still have it as a charm. Along with pocket watches, my father was also fond of building tiny spaceships. He would fly them in the small workshop we worked at. I'd collect the ones that didn't work too well and hang them with strings so I could imagine them flying in space, always exploring looking for a planet or a monster to fight. My favorite was a brass ship that was only painted red at the tip, wings, and at the windows. My father would always joke, a kid like you doesn't deserve a basic ship. I needed to have multiple things going on so I was never bored. My father dreamed of going to space. He would stargaze late at night while I was supposed to be in bed. But I noticed he would always sit with his old telescope gazing at the sky. Distant, almost like he had disappeared from the world. When I was younger, I thought he was lonely. I would join him, and he'd teach me the names of constellations and tell me stories of great space travelers who inspired people across the universe. He told me the stories like he was there at that moment, standing with the men and women who snuck on his ships and fought countless enemies while the crew shook in their boots. As we grew older, 
He became more and more upset when he looked at the night sky. I knew he didn't want me to grow up here, on this dead planet that was doomed to disappear. It was only a matter of time. He wanted me to be happy, out there, where there are more things beyond our comprehension. He would tell me, with that sad, distant look in his eyes, that we would explore space together someday. That he would be the Stella Noble and Piege of the stars. We would explore galaxies, eat alien food, and watch supernovas from the safety of our ship. It was a dream we wanted to pursue so badly. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to fly. He tried to fight the inevitable for as long as he could until he couldn't. On his last day, I was able to see him with a smile one last time. I wasn't sure why, though. He had spent years trying to find a way to make me happy, even though I was okay with where I was. I was worried that he just smiled for me, but wasn't proud of himself. The thought hurt me and left me thinking for a while. On the day of his funeral, I left early, not staying for the pleasantries. There weren't many people there anyway because we never got out that much. Just a couple blacksmiths, a neighbor, and a couple people I grew up with. I made my way home to our small workshop, but it wasn't the same as before. It seemed to be drained of life, dull, empty. Even the fire didn't want to stand tall. I sighed and rested my head on a table that was covered on scrap metal and oil. I have a a weak smile remembering that in the 19 years living here, we had never kept this house clean. I lifted my head when a small glint of light caught my eye. I figured that it was just another piece of copper, but as I was going to flick it away, I realized that it was much smaller than a copper piece, but it wasn't as small as a screw. It was a key. But a key to what? I searched the shop confused, and that's when I found the note on my bed. It was in my dad's handwriting, but the lines were shaky. I figured he wrote this not too long ago. It read, If you're reading this, then I am assuming you already found the key. Don't be shocked. Whenever you are upset, you immediately go to the workbench and bury your head in your arms. That's why I put the key there, so I can lead you on a little adventure. I don't have much time, otherwise I would have set up an elaborate puzzle. But look behind our bookshelf, and yes, you have to pull it out. May your weak arms be with you. I love you. Have fun on your journey. I felt a sting in my eye when I read that, but it kept me determined. I practically ran to our bookshelf and... Of course, had a hard time pulling it out. I saw a door and unlocked it as fast as I could, bursting with a sudden excitement. When I opened the door, it led to a staircase. I slid down the spiral rail and landed in a large room that could have been a basement. I turned on the lights and gasped. In front of me was a beautiful rocket ship. Brass with red at the tip, tail, and around the windows. I couldn't think. Just smile wide at my father's gift to me. Thank you, father. I leapt inside firing up the engines, flicking switches, and pressing as many buttons as I could. Some sort of door above me opened, which led to outside. I was really doing this. I'm going to make my father proud of me. He left with a smile, and so did I. That was really good. AJ's yeah. a better writer than I am, that's for sure. Dang. At least you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I see Alicia was trying to pull at our heartstrings. Yeah. Did, did you just wiggle it all, or did you just fall asleep? Yeah, uh, I caught back in at the end, so it's okay. <laughs> so what do you think the moral or theme of her story was? Now, did she did she provide it or are we just... Nope, she did provide it. I have a moral okay. right here. Right. I can tell you exactly what the moral is. Will you calm down? Yeah, I'm just staying. Take I got it. Take a deep it. breath. I got it. Deep breath. Give me some space. Uh, you had a, you had like a pun. <laughs> Dad joke. Because of stars and stuff. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's outside. It's up there. No, what's the moral? What do you think? Amanda, what do you think the moral is? This is actually, I've been trying to figure out what it is listening to the story, and I'm not really sure. I feel like it has to do with the relationship between the father and the daughter, but I'm not really sure how to put that into words, what exactly I think it is. So hopefully Zach has something. Hmm. Yeah, I would assume it has something to do with the relationship or, I don't know, getting being set free. The the moral is you can achieve whatever goal you set your mind to, despite the hard path to get there. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I like it. Mm -hmm. And the first question we we have, all right, from Alicia, is interesting. What sex gender did you imagine the character? And did that affect your your viewpoint on the story? And it's funny because, Amanda, you said she, and she never identifies the character in the story. Oh, so I guess since you already know how you imagine the character, did it, <laughs> how did that affect the story for you? Well, I saw it as like a father and daughter type of dynamic. So, I mean, as 
I don't know. I don't know why I automatically went to. Probably because you're a woman. Well, I guess maybe. Did you imagine yeah, it I, as a man? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you, Aaron, did you imagine it as a man? Uh, I imagine it as a non-binary, gender oh, non-specific. Oh, God. We're like... <laughs> <laughs> no, Hit first, the red hot topic button, guys. The first time I read it, I imagined it as a girl. Because you're a woman. So, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm transitioning. That's pretty creative to to format it that way so we don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just I don't know, seemed like a father-daughter relationship to me. I mean, yeah, I also had flickerings of a video game, obviously, because I always do. And <laughs> what, that, what that game character is that? was one. Beyond Good and Evil. Has has pretty specifically has a part where the the father figure is missing, presumed dead, and but he left you keys to a rocket ship. Oh, well, I'm sure that this story's been told in some fashion before, but sure, yeah, I know. I don't, I don't expect at least you to be referencing a 2003 video game. <laughs> probably not. Probably before they were <laughs> born, because it's a young listener the way I understand it. So probably a probably a safe bet. It was a really good story, by the way. So I want to encourage you keep writing. I mean, yeah, seriously, keep writing. That's a great story. It didn't really affect my, to answer her question, did that affect your viewpoint in the story? No, I mean, I think it would have worked fine, boy or girl. It really mm-hmm. didn't matter to me. It was just yeah. more about the the fact yeah. that dad was building it. I think I think parental relationships are parental relationships, you know? I, I agree. It doesn't matter what the kid is or wants to be. The relationship is what matters. Did it affect your viewpoint on the story at all, Amanda? Like, can would you see the story different if it was a boy? Not at all. I think right. it's just about when you listen to a story that's as detailed and creative as that one, you start to imagine it in your head, or at least I do. So I start to try to, like, envision it, I guess, naturally. So for me, I was letting it play out in my head, and for whatever reason, it was a girl. I think part of me was like, is this going to go, like, Tomb Raider-esque, like, kind of sort of thing because the father and the daughter relationship. Oh, Walton Goggins shows up? <laughs> you wish. This story would be great. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Oh, I guess... you guys are talking about the movie. <laughs> so for me, I guess it's just, I don't know, probably just because I am a woman, like Zach said, I just automatically went to that. Well, and it I've... just feels like you would default to the gender you are or yeah. feel like you are, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it honestly feels true. So I can't really argue it. All right. Other question. These are my questions uh, based off of her story. If you were stuck on a dying world and finally escaped, I'm just kind of curious. What's the first thing you would do, Zach? What's the first thing you'd do? Play some banging tunes and kick back and watch the stars. You'd just be Star-Lord? Kind of. <laughs> kind of feels it feels right, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't feel wrong, that's for sure. Yeah. I that mean, is I don't, for sure. I, you know, yeah. I would just kind of set it into drift and just kind of enjoy enjoy the stars, I guess. I would lose my mind if I was all alone. I would start talking to myself. I would talk myself through. Immediately? That doesn't surprise yeah. anybody. <laughs> I would be like, okay, so for today, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And then as I'm doing it, I talk myself through it because that's going to be psychotic? lonely. Are you psychotic? No, but that's going to be lonely. You have <laughs> yes. to keep yourself sane. It's the first day. <laughs> it's a rough day. <laughs> I just left a dying world and so I'm all like alone. you like talking so much that you couldn't go 15 minutes in the space without it. I could, but I think the fear of the unknown and being all – like knowing <laughs> I've got to do this all by myself and I – I don't know. I would just freak out a little space bit. Space would find a voice and be like, okay, stop <laughs> it. Get to the point already. Uh, that's true. It would. In space, no one can hear you talk to yourself. Ah, I see what you did there. That's a playoff. A movie. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I would do is try to make contact with anyone else who had left, with all these rich sons of bitches that had already left and vacated and left us to die. Yeah, I don't want to hang out with them, though. No, no. I just want to find their planet, get on their planet, and then I'm going to find a way to bring them all down because I want to go back and save the other people that are on that planet. I would find a way to save the people that are there still. The there poor, you the impoverished. What a, what a hero. So you can do that and still use my idea of talking to yourself. You just talk yourself through those Nobody steps. is going to listen to me if I land and I'm already talking to myself like a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone talks to themselves eventually. You know, the first time you go into space and you've never been up there, I think most of it would be like, oh, wow. Not Amanda. Yeah. She's like, I got to figure out what time do I pee today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time is relative in space anyway, so it doesn't matter. I can tell you I'm not going to try to save everybody. Forget it. Well, no? we know that. 
Forget it. You're not even going to make the effort. You're just going to go hang out with the rich people and make them think you're one of them. Hey, I'm one of you guys. I'm more part of the one percent. Give me a job. Nah, well, I got a, I got a spaceship and I got outer space. I can go explore. Just kind of make the rounds. You know. <laughs> Till yeah, you get maybe sucked I'll, into maybe a I'll black talk hole. to the rich people and become like a smuggler. It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> like Han Solo or like Mal. Mal. Always Mal. <laughs> Always Mal. <laughs> Always Mal. Please, he shot that dude in the first episode. It was pretty sweet. Well, Han Solo shot a guy once before he didn't. Yeah, and then he went all soft, though. Mal just kind of is pretty consistent in his Amazing. guys holding a person hostage. And he's like, well, I'll shoot the hostage to get him out of the way a little bit. And then and plant one between the guy's eyes. <laughs> I like that. Nobody else apparently is going to go back for the planet that's dying. Just no, man, out. I got to be a space cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Those people aren't my people. I care. I care about my friends, my family. I assume in the, the scenario is just me and my dad. So I got nobody. I have no those those right. people aren't me. If if you had somebody else that you cared about, they'd probably be on the ship with you. But right. I, I mean, everybody. well, I don't know. I mean, she, he or she, I still, I still they, say she was really excited to get to that spaceship and they just popped them into space. So maybe they just weren't thinking like I didn't know it was going to work. So now I'm here. Crap. I forgot mom. it's pretty (laughs) awkward yeah i mean i guess once you get past the freak out of your alone in space then you could try to figure out how to help the people but i don't know why you're freaking out that would be the most exciting thing in the world yeah that's nerve-wracking not even a little a lot no i left this planet that sucks (laughs) <laughs> that every, all the rich people already left. So obviously they know something that I don't. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I really want to rob the rich people. I do too. Spite. Yeah. You'd be like space hood. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, except there's no poor people to give it to. I'm just, I'm the poor person. God, this whole episode's making me want to join the space force. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. Do it. <laughs> Apply now. <laughs> it really is. That's fun. Uh, okay. So do you let other people or circumstances deter you from your from your goals? Uh, I think sometimes it can get in my head a little bit, but I always somehow persevere, I guess. So I I don't really let it get to me enough to stop me because I'm pretty determined once I'm set to do something, I'll do it. But it does get in my head. So it can mess with me for a little bit. But I guess I just find the voice inside my head of reason that's like, no. Or I'll just talk to like a physical person who is my voice of reason and be like, you need to tell me to stop being an idiot. Do you talk to yourself a lot? No, I said talk to somebody like a yeah, my person. I know, but I'm still here, and like all I hear is you wanting to talk to yourself. <laughs> no, <laughs> like what? What are the conversations like? Hey, Amanda, how are you? You know what? I'm doing well. Do you actually like two side it? No, no, not at all. I just sometimes I'll just talk to myself about what I'm doing. Do you talk to yourself in the third person? Like Amanda's going to do what Amanda's going to do. <laughs> no, I'm not Terry <laughs> Crews, but I would really like to be that. Maybe I'll start. Yeah, I am my own best conversationalist. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh at your own jokes like all the time. <laughs> I do. Haven't you listened to me on this podcast? That was really good, Zach. <laughs> Myself. That was that was really good. What I'm quite you? humorous. What about you, Zach? Do you uh, do you let other people deter you? Are you are you speaking specifically to people who are like trying to stop you? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not necessarily trying to stop you, but they are maybe a negative influence. They're or, ragging on you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, um, you know what? I think actually a perfect example of this, and just follow follow with me if you will. Do you remember the Toby Keith song, How Do You Like Me Now? Uh, kind of, and now I'm wondering em- like enormously where this is going. Right. Well, okay, the premise of that song is, is a girl he liked in high, high school didn't like him because he, he was the music nerd, not the cool jock guy. And then, so eventually he's like, how do you like me now? Now that I'm on my way, like... He's basically like, you know, hey, look, I'm in your radio. I became something. So how do you like me now? That's yeah. where my stance is. I want to say I want to succeed to spite these people. Oh, so you don't let them deter you? No, in fact, I make them my fuel. I was going to say that encourages him more. Do you know how many people tell you when you're growing up that the idea about writing about video games is ridiculous? Mm-hmm. And here I am on my way. There you go. Aww. Aww, and then when cool. I make it, I can tell those people, told you. And then like, oh, Zach, that's so cool. I'll say, go to hell. <laughs> Wait, so you finally make it and you're going to be told you that, that that's your retort? Yeah, well, it'd be you better like, work well, on pe- that. People who uh, always be growing up and said, there's no way that'll ever work out. And then the, when you make it and they're like, well, you know what? Hey, congratulations. I was wrong. I'll say, damn right. You were wrong. That's better. That's better than told you. 
because you know, I told you it yeah. works in a movie. It doesn't really work in real life. Hey, well, yeah, you. that's yeah, that's about as witty as talk to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody really does that. You meet one of those great detractors, and they're just like, "Hey, man, what's going on with you?" Hey, told you. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's pretty sad. <laughs> and also, go to hell. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> well, at least you got it worked out. Screw you, Bob. Uh, I used to let it like deter me. You know, it used to be, especially like if you work in the corporate world, you get to a point where you accept wherever they see you as being, even though they're not really appreciating you for who you really are. They're kind of just looking at bits and moments, you know. But as I've gotten older, I don't anymore. I mean, I just like, hey, I know what I'm capable of. I'm not going to let you get in the way. So I'll do the best I can and whatever I can. And hopefully it'll work out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at least I'm going to try. Nobody's going to turn me off of it. Good for you. Yeah, I'm going to write a book later. A memoir? Mm-hmm. It's called You Could Do It, But You Probably Won't. <laughs> uh, told you by Aaron Peterson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I got another question. If you had the opportunity for space travel, would you guys take it? Yes. Is this just because, like, for fun, or is this to save my life, or, like, what are the circumstances? What if you use the, so, the Mars mission, right? One-way trip NASA would send you on. Would you take that? No. Do what now? Because NASA, they're planning for the the Mars mission eventually, but it'll be, it will be a one-way trip. You'll go there, and you will set up the colony and stuff like that, but you're not going to have a way to get back. Hard pass. I'm in. Yeah, I'm way in. Why not? Why why wouldn't you once they terraform it or whatever they're gonna do and if it's livable and sustainable, why not? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Nope. You really wanna you just wanna hang yeah, out here? She can, well she can't watch suits there. <laughs> <laughs> I do like suits. But it'll be on Amazon Prime and they <laughs> will have that there. <laughs> uh, it'll lay down Google Fiber first thing. Amazon online. is probably how you get there. No, I'm I'm uh, I think I'd be a little too scared to do space travel. I'm afraid of heights, man. Yeah, that's Kind and of I also the highest get you can go. Car sickness. Like, I feel like that's just a, a very bad situation. So you get the opportunity <laughs> to go to another planet, something no one else has ever been able to do. And you would be like, no, I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. My God. Yeah, that's fair. I think a lot of people would say no, right? Because you, you're not going to be able to sort of see most of your family again. Good. More, more room in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> you can sprawl out and twirl around. See, I, man, the old, I'm telling you. I've, I'm, I'm in a good place in my life because I take opportunities when you when you get them. Take every opportunity you can. Live your life. You know, you live it like it's the last day. And Mars seems like a great last day because nobody else right. has got that story. And they're like, remember when Aaron left and went to Mars? We never saw him again. But remember when he left and went to Mars? <laughs> yeah, Mars. I don't care about their memories. I care about mine. And that feels like a really, like, sad to me that's sad. Mm-hmm. So. I, I Sounds really like afraid to die, Amanda. She just want to leave friends and family, right? No, I don't. And, and I also and don't want, yeah, like that would be Wait, super nerve wracking for which me. Which is bigger? <laughs> in, in your list of can't do it reasons. <laughs> I, which is bigger, friends and family or heights? Which one? Commit. <laughs> heights. Are you serious? Yes. That's just a weird dilemma. What if there's bugs out there that I don't know about? Space like Space bugs. Yes. Super, Mars bugs. <laughs> like super <laughs> troopers. Starship troopers. <laughs> we saw the same movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. Oh, God. Good pass. Johnny Ringo will save you. Nobody's out there. Can Malcolm Reynolds come save me? I might do it if Nathan Fillion comes out. No, because Zach will be Mal- Malcolm Reynolds, and he's not no, going to save I'm you. I'm the new Malcolm Reynolds. Well, then just Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Space bugs. <laughs> the actor? Yeah. <laughs> Swap bugs away? Space bugs. I think he would save me. Maybe. Mm, I don't think so. I not- think the best you're going to get is Michael Ironside up there. I think... <laughs> I think he'd show up, see that you were talking to yourself, and just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just leave. All right. Well, that was a good story. Do you think the sh- the the story was truth or fiction? Fiction, I hope. I well, I hope it's truth, but unfortunately, I think it's fiction. It is fiction. It was a good fiction Sadly, story, though. It was. It was a really good story. Jeez, you guys are just kissing Alicia's ass. I know. I was kind of feeling that way too. A little, a little too many compliments. We got to bring her down a little bit. Alicia had a good story. It was all right. I'd give it an easy B minus. <laughs> You're grading her now. <laughs> what do you think the title of her story is? Why Why do we have to guess Oh, yeah, that? you don't have to guess. I guess you should just tell you. <laughs> hey, Aaron, what was the title of the story? <laughs> it was Star Kid. Star Kid's the title. <laughs> no, we're, we're all going to guess. <laughs> we're going to go around, Robin, until I'm somebody gonna, gets it. 
I'm going to guess Star Kid. <laughs> First try, not too bad. Yeah. You're I, real I good the, at this, Zach. I was like, I saw the file when it came in. Sometimes I am stupid. I didn't. Where did that come from? It came in the, they sent it to my story at smirkpodcast.com, which coincidentally, as the show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read from and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like to have the chance to have yours read, you can send it to my story at smirkpodcast.com. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast and be sure to use the social hashtag Smirk. Don't miss an episode. Be sure to subscribe to Smirk on your podcast app of choice. Leave a review if you could and check out our website at SmirkPodcast.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. That was really fun. That was fun. Yeah. Alicia, it was a good story. I just had to rein these two in. Fine. I, mean, I won't compliment her anymore. B minus is Jeez. what you said, right? So you, you're retracting that. Do you lie? No. Are you a liar? I never lie. Never lie? I so said it's good. You said B minus. We offer me. Is B minus good because that's passing, right? It is. Well, I was an average D minus student, so <laughs> Bs are pretty good. <laughs> I don't think D minus is a good average. <laughs> or a no. good student. It didn't help that I wasn't there most of the time, you know? Yeah, I understand how that goes. All right, well, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of Smirk. And as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. Hey, can you um, explain what exactly you're talking to yourself about? Oh, like what I actually say? What do you What do you say? I don't have like a conversation like, hey, Amanda, what are you going to do today? It's just like, <laughs> okay, for example, sometimes I'm at work and I'm like, I really need to get this done. Like I just think out loud. So it's not like a conversation. But, but most people just think. Why would you say that out because loud? Because I'm, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> so everybody around you is like, why the no, hell no, no. is she giving us her itinerary <laughs> every when, day? It's when I'm alone. <laughs> like if I'm just alone in the office, I'll just be like, I really need to get this done. But I first, I need to get God, this. God, I hope it's they just... have security cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I just got this woman reading aloud what her work plan is.